Hello YouTube, Chris Klein here with Alma Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. And today we're gonna talk about MIDI controllers. Um, as you can see, there's quite a few here in front of me. We're gonna talk about all the different options that exist today, the different types of keys, controls, inputs and outputs. I mean, it's, it's just never ending at this point. You know? And also, look at what this is, these grid controllers and what they're used for. So, stay tuned and we're gonna talk about all of these wonderful little gadgets that I have in front of me, and the big ones too. So before we jump right into these controllers, I wanna talk about MIDI just for a couple of minutes, just a quick primer. Now, MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It is a language, and the MIDI spec, or MIDI 1.0, has been in existence since basically 1983 when it was first introduced at NAMM. MIDI was originally developed to give synth standalone synthesizers, drum machines, uh, modules, the ability to communicate with each other uh, with the common protocol, and primarily for the purpose of uh, live performance. Now, that changed and uh, it quickly spread into studio use, and there were many other applications that developed uh, for the use of MIDI. Um, you know, triggering lights and things of that nature. But for all intents and purposes, its primary function was, to, uh, once again, to, uh, to allow different keyboards from different companies to communicate over a common language. And it was so good that we're still using the original version today. Now, the 2.0 spec is in the works. I'm not gonna get into that, um, but basically, that's, that's MIDI in a nutshell. It's a language. Uh, you've got 16 channels that the keyboards, drum machines, grid controllers, whatever you have can communicate with each other. Um, and it also communicates over USB now and other uh, uh, protocols. Um, so let's talk about some of these keyboards. So as you can see in front of me, I have a few controllers in different sizes, different configurations. We have these smaller controllers from Arturia. These are very, very different from each other. We have the Launchpad MIDI from, excuse me, Launchpad Mini from Novation. I'll talk about this as well. And then behind me, I have Arturia's Keylab 49 Mark II, 49 keys. And then the Keylab 88, which is 88 keys. And these are weighted. These are synthesizer keys, weighted keys. They both feel great. Really, really cool. So what kinds of things do you need to look for in a MIDI controller? And that can be any number of parameters. Keys, controls, the size, what kind of connectivity it offers on the back of the device or from the front in some cases. Do I need a grid controller? Am I working with, with Ableton? Uh, am I a super duper pro? I want weighted keys. I'm gonna be doing lots of soloing. I need all 88. Uh, it, you know, it just, it depends. And I can't tell you which ones you need or which one you need, but what I can show you is what they all offer. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna start with this, the Mini Lab. Now this is from Arturia. As you can see, it has the Mini keys, eight pads, two banks, so you really have 16 pads, and then you have 16 uh, rotary controllers as well, which will allow you con to control different parameters within a software synthesizer or um, other parameters that might exist within your DAW. Now, it also has your pitch bend and modulation. All these things are very important. Sustain input on the back, as well as MIDI over USB. This is ultra portable has lots of different controls. So if you are working with, let's say you're working with uh, like a mini Moog emulator uh, in the box, in the computer, in Ableton or Pro Tools or, or Fruity Loops or whatever, working with the mouse and controlling you know, your cutoff frequency, whatever, it's kind of clunky, honestly. And so having these knobs, having some, some kind of tactile control surface to work with, is really, really cool. It kind of puts you back into that analog mindset where when you turn a knob, you're actually controlling the electricity on the synth, which to me, I've got to have that. I mean, otherwise, I'm going to go crazy with my hand on the mouse all the time. It just doesn't feel natural. Now, the key step from Arturia, as you can see, doesn't have 
all these different knobs and different pads, okay? And when we turn around and look at the back of this keyboard, where the Mini Lab only had the sustain input and the USB, well, with this, we have sustain, we have CV or control voltage outputs, mod, gate, pitch. We also have sync out and in. So this will play with the Volca series or other devices that actually support that protocol. And it has the original standard five pin MIDI DIN and output and input. So you might be thinking, well, why would I need to have a MIDI out and in or standard five pin in as well as my USB? Well, that, that's, that's actually, a, it's a good question and it's really easy to answer. This is not just a MIDI controller, but it's also a sequencer and an arpeggiator, right? So it's gonna send this information, wh whether you're sequencing or using the arpeggiator, to your computer, to your DAW, to a software synthesizer, or if you have other MIDI keyboards, older MIDI keyboards, maybe you have an old DX7 or a Roland D50 or something like that, well, you can take the MIDI out of this, go into the DX7 or whatever uh, the old synth is. It could be a Triton, a, who knows? I mean, there's a gazillion out there. Now you can sequence using this. So it's gonna spit information out of USB and out of the five pin, the standard MIDI, con uh, MIDI connection. But not only that, you know, a lot of you are probably playing with the modular world and, and uh, you like to be a little more hands-on with your gear. Well, with the CV outputs, you can actually control your modular rig too. So now you're controlling your modular rig, whatever you have in the computer, whatever exists out here in your MIDI studio, older synthesizers, drum machines. And if you also play in the Volca world, well, now you got sync out and in as well for that stuff. So you can control so many devices with just this one MIDI controller. Now, of course, you lose all the different knobs and the different pads. But chances are, if you have this, you probably have something like this or maybe something a little bit bigger in your rig already as a master controller. I just recently got one of these and this I think is the biggest bang for your buck right now as far as portable controllers can go. Do I miss having this stuff when I'm on the road? Absolutely, but Having a sequencer right on board, arpeggiator, and the ability to connect to so many other things, to me, that's invaluable. I own this too. So uh, anyhow, I'm a nerd. I have lots of MIDI controllers, but this, I mean, Arturia knocked it out of the park with this. There's so many options, so much functionality. It's such a cool device, and it's built really, really well. And so behind me, I have a couple of the larger offerings from Arturia. I've got the Keylab 49 Mark II and the Keylab 88. Now once again, the 88 has weighted keys, the 49, they're synth style keys. Really, really fast, real springy, great for doing really, really fast leads. Now for the professional pianist, keyboard player, they have been playing weighted hammer action keyboards their whole lives. They're going to appreciate the give to this a whole lot more. It's gonna feel a lot more natural to them. Plus, with them being professionals, and if, I mean, if you're out gigging, you're professional, but what I mean is like, you know, they're keyboard players. They'll be playing bass lines down here and leads up here. They need the extended keyboard, right? They need a proper full 88 keys. Now, there are a couple of things that you're gonna trade off, right? With the 49, like the key step, we have the ability to control our modular rig via control voltage gates, you know, proper electricity, if you will, right? The 88 doesn't do that. Now they both have standard MIDI ins and outs, a five pin DIN, as well as sustain input and other auxiliary inputs too for other types of foot controllers. So they're really, really great. Now, like the Mini Lab, where we have the eight pads, which again, really 16, two banks, and the rotary encoders. <clears throat> well, we have all of that here as well, plus we've got these faders or sliders, right? And other controls to access other parameters within your DAW or your software synthesizer. Being able to access your DAW, certain editing commands, the transport is super duper handy because once again, it gets your hands off the mouse. You can focus on creating content. You can stop, play, do whatever you need to, which is really, really cool. Now, we also have the standard modulation 
and pitch bend, which feels really, really nice. They are more fluid. I like the way that these feel better than these, the capacitance, capacitance base, but the thing that are cool about these is you can tap through them and do really cool rhythmic things that you can't necessarily do here, right? So it's a trade-off once again. But these are really, really great. I actually have the 49 myself. I'm a big fan of this company, as you can tell. Now, this is not the, the be-all, end-all of MIDI keyboard controllers. There are a lot of companies out there besides Arturia. You've got Native Instruments. You have Novation. Um, you have Yamaha, Akai, Korg. And they all do something similar with different sizes, different types of keyboards, weighted keys, hammer action, uh, synth style. <clears throat> it just depends on what you're looking for. You just need to know the right questions to ask. So we've been focusing on the keyboard style controllers and I wanna talk about the grid style controller. Now, this is made by Novation. This is the Launchpad Mini. They have the Launchpad and the Launchpad Pro. And another popular uh, grid controller is the Ableton Push 2. And there's other companies like Livid and, um, oh, I know I'm forgetting. Oh, and Akai, of course. Uh, they make grid style controllers as well. Now, these are used primarily with Ableton Live. And what these allow you to do is program drum beats or play musical notes, but you can launch clips within Ableton. Now, I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty of Ableton. It's, it's a really, really great DAW. It's far different than Pro Tools or Logic in that you can create arrangements on the fly and, and launch your samples, clips, whether they be, well, sample or loop-based or MIDI clips. Uh, it's just really cool. And that's what this controller was designed for, to work with Ableton. Now, Ableton's push, is significantly more robust, and it basically allows you to be completely hands-off from the computer. Uh, I don't have a push here. I wish that I did, but of course you can seek it out on the internet or of course here on, on YouTube. Um, now, there's gonna be a little more of a learning curve to operating something like this. Uh, you know, with the standard keyboard controller, you're probably going to play a synthesizer or a sampler or you know, ivory, a piano emulator or something like that. Something that is traditionally associated with a keyboard. This is not that, but really, really cool. And if you are working in Ableton, having some kind of gig, grid controller is certainly a must have. So once again, this is Novation's Launchpad Mini. It's super small, compact, doesn't quite weigh a pound, and is super duper fun to, uh, to create just on the fly. You know, let's, you're on the bus, you're on the train, subway, uh, depending on where you live. Dig your computer out, plug this in the USB. It's powered by a USB. You're rocking Ableton like as soon as it boots up. Really, really cool. So everything that you see here with me right now from Arturia Novation, well, they all come with software as well. So if you're new to this game, right, and you don't have a DAW, for instance, well, everything that you see here comes with Ableton Live Lite, which is a really, really great starting point if you want to get into creating stuff that's more beat-oriented, EDM, hip-hop, um, uh, and performing that stuff live. So these all come with Ableton Live Lite, which is a huge bonus. Now, the Arturia keyboards also come with their own software, Analog Lab or Analog Lab Lite which is basically a cross-section of all of their software emulations. So you basically have a Mini Moog, a Moog Modular, you have an ARP 2600, a DX7, I mean, it goes on and on. Jupiter 8, Prophet 5, um, EMS Synthy, Synclavier, I mean, there, there's, I think, 22, 23 different uh, emulations in Arturia's arsenal at this point. And so each of these, come with a really big cross-section of that at no additional cost. So the, the value is immense. Each of those individual packages from Arturia are anywhere from $99 to $149 per instrument. So getting all of those bundled in, now they're not fully wide open where you can completely tweak them, but the parameters that you are most likely going to want to tweak, you can make that happen. So it exists there. Innovation, their products come with other software as well. Ableton Live Lite, 
as well as some of Novation's uh, software synthesizers. So whenever you buy one of these, they're kind of giving you the ability to start creating right out of the box. Register the product, download the software, install it, and you're rocking and rolling really, really fast, which is really, really cool. And again, with some of these, you have extended DAW control. So you can control whatever you're working in, Ableton, Pro Tools, yada, yada, yada. There are quite a few out there. I can't make that decision for you, but hopefully at this point, you have a pretty good idea of where you need to go with these controllers and what kinds of questions you need to ask. Inputs and outputs, MIDI, CV, uh, rotary encoders, pads, key size, weighted, not weighted, that's pretty much it for this, for this video. Um, so we'll stop here. All right, so thanks for tuning in today. Hopefully you have a better understanding of what MIDI is and what these controllers can do for you. And before I totally sign out, I want to wish this band, a certain ratio, a happy 40 years. They've been going at it for 40 years. They are post-punk post-funk icons, you need to look into them. Uh, really big on the Acid House scene, so they were right there at the beginning of MIDI as well. I know this might seem irrelevant, but trust me, it makes sense. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. You can actually ask us questions in the comments below, or you can call, email, once again, smoke signals, however you feel you need to uh, get your message across. Um, and with that, I'm signing off. Thanks again. Hope to see you soon. Oh, and subscribe if you haven't done that. We're going to have more videos uh, covering MIDI, software synthesizers, pro audio. So please check back in. Uh, that's it. Chris Klein, Alma Music Center. Thanks a lot.